Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and I thought because today is Lunar New Year, it might be a ton of fun to watercolor a dragon together. Now, there are tons of different styles of dragons based on um, the mythology, the culture, the country that you may be interested in or looking at. Um, <laughs> there's so many different styles, but I thought for today's just to make it kind of uh, simple and easy to understand, I thought we would do something more along the lines of a snake sort of body. Think lion mane um, with lion tail, frog legs, and maybe some fish or mermaid sort of fins, and then sort of a squared jaw type face. Um, this is going to be kind of slapdash. It's going to be I'm going to be using some granulating watercolors. It's just going to be for fun because dragons are awesome. Again, there are many different styles depending on, you know, what you're looking at, the etymology of dragon and the history and the country and what you choose to highlight, what's important to you. Maybe it's from your own specific country or culture. But for this, I am going to be using the Hoodrum Aquel. This is the French Ultramarine. Um, <laughs> can I get these open? That's the real, the real trick here, I think, for this video, is if I can open these. And I may not be able to open this one. Okay, we'll come back to him. Oh my gosh. They're all going to be difficult, aren't they? I can't. I have weak wrists, folks. All right. This is Da Vinci's burnt umber. This is very granulating. It's a very beautiful dark brown. I'm here for it. Again, you may not want to do granulating watercolors. You may not want to do watercolor for this. Uh, you may not like these colors specifically. What's best is what's preference and what you already own. So you don't have to rush out and buy these if you don't want to. This is Daniel Smith's quinacridone coral. This is also a fun one. <laughs> Now you know why I don't do a lot with tubes. I am typically a watercolor pan type of gal because I just don't have to open things and it doesn't end up being a mess all over my person. And now it looks like um, I'm bleeding. I'm not, it's the watercolor, I promise. It's just a very stark sort of shocking red. <laughs> Please don't be alarmed. <laughs> I beg you. And then um, I have the Daniel Smith Lunar Black. This is another fun one that's very granulating. Um, I only own two blacks. I own this one and then I have the Schmeka Hoodrum Aquel in a pan. That's the Ivory Black. Um, you could own as many blacks as you need, but um, as I'm not like someone that's specifically just working in the color of black, I only find that I need two. All right, let's go back and see if I can open this one. Nope, we're gonna have to ask boyfriend off screen. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I call my husband boyfriend because um, one, he's still my boyfriend and that's what he's answered to for 20 years. So boyfriend opened it. I'm just not strong enough. All right. So, Hoodrum Aquel French Ultramarine. That's a really nice one too. So, grab a pipette or a tiny spray bottle or fill a new sponge and then drop in some water if you want to thin these out. Again, what's best is what's preference. You decide how thick or how thin you want your watercolors to be on the page. There is no right or wrong. I mean, some folks say there is, but this is not how I roll. What's wrong is not using your watercolors and letting them sit on a shelf. That's a waste and that's sad, so let's not do that. All right, let's mix some colors up and see what we have here. Ooh, yes. Big fan. I love brown. <laughs> oh, it's such a beautiful color. I can't. Can it's so beautiful? Okay. Gosh. And we wonder why I'm now craving chocolate. Okay. 
Let's mix all these up a little bit. So how is your weekend going so far? I hope you're having a ton of fun or it's relaxing, mellow and stress-free. Can you see really the pink in this quinacridone coral? Gosh, it's such a fun color. All right, let's mix this black. This black is very, very granulating. It's a ton of fun. Um, what granulating means is there are different sized particles. So when you go to paint, it actually pulls apart and starts to separate according to particle size. And it looks like there's additional texturing. Um, if you are into smooth applications of watercolor across a page, granulating watercolors are not for you. That is not what this does. Um, so why do it? For fun for texture, for intrigue, for something new and exciting. Um, because I love all things. <laughs> so, now, one of the fun things to do with granulating watercolor is to apply a layer of water first. That way when you lay the watercolor down, it immediately starts to bloom, cauliflower spread, and you can start to see the granulation and things pull apart. So you need to decide how you want your dragon to go. And you can use a pencil, you can pre-sketch. If you want to fill a portion of this page and then maybe fold it and have it be a card, like Happy Lunar New Year type of card, or maybe you want it really, really narrow. You want your dragon super narrow and you're gonna cut it, make a strip to a bookmark. Um, gift tags, or maybe you wanna do a large print or you just want to fill a page and work on something fun. So you can figure out if you want your dragon to coil, to loop, to bend, to undulate, you know, convex, concave, how you want your dragon to sort of take up real estate on this page. And maybe you want it square angles, and this is more sort of um, abstract or stylized within this version. If you want to do this in pen and ink, um, Neo Color 2, colored pencil, chalk pastel, whatever medium you choose to use. I'm just doing watercolor because I'm in a watercolor place right now <laughs> in my mind, in my heart. So I just lean into my moods and this is my mood today. Um, but it could be squares. <laughs> it doesn't have to be smooth rotations of loops and bends of circles. It doesn't have to be that way. So I'm just doing a sky snake. <laughs> essentially again with frog legs sort of a lion head tail and maybe some sort of aquatic type fin if i want to add that sort of um design element to my dragon now i'm going to take my water and i'm going to pre-wet where i want my dragon to be and there is some color in this brush so hopefully you will see where my water is um, I am doing the Fabriano Studio cold press. Cold press paper has a texture. Hot press is smooth. Again, whatever watercolor paper you have will be fine for this. It is perfect for this. Um, if you do not have watercolor paper, mixed media paper um, can be a great alternative making sure I see where my lines are. Can you see where my water is? <laughs> I can kind of see where my water is. And again, I'm doing loop-de-loops just because I think that'll be easy for folks to see and understand. I have a very elongated, exaggerated dragon body here in the sky. And then this could be the head and this could be the tail. Okay, all right, I'm going to add some color. I'm just going to drop it in. I want my dragon to be all these colors. And again, this is a very narrow one. I could widen my dragon and I might still do that. 
I want you to be able to see sort of how I've looped and filled this. Again, you can pre-sketch if you want to figure out how you want it to fill your page. For composition, for directing the eye, there's nothing wrong with doing that and figuring out. Again, this is about a nine by 12 piece of paper. So that is why mine looks this size. But if you're working with a completely different size piece of paper, keep that in mind. Oh, I hear an ambulance coming. I may or may not pause this video. You don't want to hear that. Okay, I'm going to pause it real quick. All right, shout out to our first responders. They are always responding first. Anyway, sorry, it's Saturday. There are folks out and about. Um, I do live in the middle of a forest, but there are people, so... I apologize for the noise, but it is out of my control. I would love perfect silence in all my videos, but it's just not, not realistic when you share a space. Like a city. <laughs> Alrighty, righty. Okay, so he's a little wider. I do want more color. This is not enough color for me. Um... While a brown dragon would be beautiful, um, there is special connotation to color, understanding that in some cultures and communities, um, different colors have different meanings. So red is considered a, like, a color of prosperity and luck. So that is why I have pulled out my quinacridone coral. I really want to make sure that I highlight some of that. Put some of that in here. Okay. Again, it doesn't have to be hyper realistic. We are just having fun dropping color on a page. Um, I don't know about your environment, but for me, this is going to take quite a while to dry. I do have a blow dryer finally. So I may fire that one up to help speed up the process just a little bit. Tail and then, you know, mouth and fur. Okay, let's add another color. I'm going to need blue in my life. Blue is absolutely one of my favorite colors in the world. Um, me and a bunch of other millions of people, blue is our favorite color. <laughs> any chance to sneak some blue in and I'm gonna do it so blue is beautiful it's the ocean it's the sky it's cool and relaxing um, blues complement on the color wheel is orange so if you love working with blue and you are painting a blue vase consider having orange flowers in it or something you can use to sort of highlight how special the color blue is. Really pull that out. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of black. I am, I'm going in with a fourth color. I will not be stopped. And I can use this a little bit as a drop shadow. It's very dark, it's very beautiful. Again, this is a really fun granulating black if you are interested in textures and things like that. So as this goes to dry, you will start to see the granulation pull out and become a ton of fun. So now if you want to have little elements coming off your dragon, Keep in mind directionality. Keep in mind flow. And you can have a spiky little dragon if you want. It's all up to you. 
you just have to figure out your design aesthetic for your dragon. And then if you want to, after it dries, happy Lunar New Year. Um, if you want to go back in with another color or a pen, add some gold. If you want to add some floral motifs or different designs along the border, that's absolutely something that can be done as well. Um, including some of these colors, you know, some red roses or something like that. Um, this is a very, very hyper stylized, simple dragon. Now, I didn't do feet, but we can add a little bit of feet here in, in this guy. And we can decide if he has one set of feet, but he's really long, should he have two? And you can just kind of come in, arch over, and then do do claws. So it's just kind of a thigh situation, coming down. And then I am just using a flathead brush for the toes. And if you want him to have legs elsewhere, he can have legs elsewhere. running around. Um, he could also have legs. How am I gonna do that? I'll do legs right here. So here is the dragon and you can decide how much detail you want to add for a face. If you want him to have a face if you want him to have eyes, if you want to go back in, like I said, with a metallic, with gold, um, if you want to add like scales to a belly on certain angles, that's another thing you can add back in. But this is a really quick dragon. <laughs> He's a very colorful dragon. You can move the paper around. I think you can see how wet mine is. And that can add a little bit of blending. But it's gonna take a while for him to dry. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was a ton of fun. I hope this was easy for you, um, quick. Just something fun to sort of lean into a holiday, to throw some color on a page, to fill a page, to maybe watercolor something you've never watercolored before, but always was kind of curious about. Sky snake. <laughs> With feet and a tail and a head. <laughs> I hope you have an absolutely wonderful holiday, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.